Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to the NFL version of ProLine, direct from Las Vegas, the gaming capital of the world. It's NFL Wild Card Weekend, joined by a pair of Las Vegas pros. We're going to look at some of the NFL games this weekend. Happy New Year, everyone, and I hope you guys are doing a little bit better than the Bob Stoops is uh, this, oh, this week. <laughs> is that an, was that an embarrassment? Oh, what happened? Oh, my God. Okay. By the way, pleasure for me to be with the new gunslinger in town, who I just met a couple of weeks ago. He's trying to teach me a few things. <laughs> I got I'm my pencil. Look at this. I got three pencils. I'm writing everything down. Everything. Everything. You're going to need double that. These young, quick minds, right? <laughs> I heard Old a dog learns new tricks from Zach. <laughs> well, Sean, I heard a rumor that you were you were had Oklahoma on the money line. Is that correct? No, no. I've done a lot of stupid things in my life, but I haven't done that one. So, All right, yeah, gonna, Zach said, "Don't play that. Don't do that." One, so, <laughs> going to take a look at the NFL Wild Card Weekend. Some games for Saturday and Sunday. But first, I'll tell you what we have going on. Uh, Zach, you're running the NFL 41 and 21 for the season. College football 40 and 27, and college basketball 52, 17, and three. How can folks get aboard for this weekend? This weekend, JimPice.com. Obviously, we're going to talk about a couple of key wild card games. So. Uh, Please play those. Last week we went 3-0 and on the video plays. Hopefully we can do uh, that again today. Um, college basketball, today I was delighted. There's finally some games in action. I know this is recorded, so you won't be able to get the plays. But uh, going throughout the week, two days from now, there's going to be a big slate. And then on Saturday, of course, we're back to 108 college basketball games. Holiday break took away six days of prime action, but uh, we'll see how some of these teams come out. It's still a little bit of cautious plays in college basketball because teams are coming off the holiday break, they're coming back. Some of them are coming back from their families out of state, whatever it may be. Practices have been light. Some some coaches don't even know Jim Behan from Syracuse. He will he wasn't even run a practice. He'll wait until uh, the day before the game and just run warm ups or whatever. So we'll still be cautious with that. But uh, college bowl games. Hopefully we get back on track with that. Had a couple of losses here with uh, ASU and Boston College on Saturday and yesterday with uh, can't make an extra point. Texas. Down there. It, it was awful. It was awful with ASU and Boston College. No. <laughs> Get bands or butts about it, but uh, still hold a strong college football, and we've got a lot more left in the college football bowl season. So, jimfeist.com, you can get the packages on there. All right, remind everybody that Jim Feist, a couple weeks ago, had his NFL game of the year. That was Seattle Seahawks 35-6. to Last Sunday, his NFL total of the year. That was the Colt Titans under. Another winner, he has his NFL wild card game of the year. This weekend, it's 79 bucks online at jimfice.com. You can go to jimfice.com, see that football helmet below us. That's a link to the website. Or if you want to get for $25 with a guarantee, you can just call Jim's offices. That phone number is right there on the screen. All right, let's get to uh, one of the games coming up for Saturday in the NFL. Got the Ravens playing at the Steelers, AFC North wildcard rivals. And we got Pittsburgh, about a three point home favorite, total down a little bit from 47 to 46. And a half. The Ravens haven't been very good historically in recent years at Pittsburgh for these playoff games. In fact, they're 0 3. The last playoff games there, one of them a couple of years ago, I remember watching, was snowing. And we may have to look for that this weekend because the weather report Friday and Saturday in Pittsburgh, rain and some showers. And you're talking about 30. Three to 35 degrees for this Saturday night game, 60% chance of snow, so it could be a fun game to watch. The season series, both home teams won uh, at home convincingly. The Ravens won in September 26-6, to although it was a 10-6 to game late in the third quarter. And then the November 2nd rematch, the Steelers won 42-23. to That was a game where neither team could run the football, but it was up to the passing games, and uh, Ben Roethlisberger had one of his six touchdowns, zero pick games. That was part of his run. We had 12 touchdowns and zero picks in two games. So, Sean, here we have a Ravens team that has very good balance on both sides of the ball. They can rush the passer, which is key this time of the year. On the other hand, they're just 4-4 four and four straight up uh, on the road. So uh, what do you make of their chances? See what he does to me, Zach. He steals all my materials, and he throws it to me to say, hey, what do you, what do you got here? <laughs> you got what, nothing left? Yeah, come on. What, I mean, you empty the tank on me. Yeah, uh, first of all, uh, this is a Saturday night game. Pittsburgh at home, three, pretty solid. It opened four and a half and immediately went down to three when they found out about that injury to uh, LeVon Bell, and he's a major factor. We're going to talk about that. Total is 46 and a half. Game goes at 8.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It is an NBC game. <clears throat> and as you already mentioned, stole some of my thunder, each team won at home this season as a short home favorite and did it by pretty much lopsided scores. Huge, huge, huge concern here for the Steelers is the running back, Bell. 
who set a club record, 2,215 all-purpose yards. This guy caught 83 passes. He did not fumble the ball at all. And we're looking at some really great running backs that the Steelers have had over the years. And he was voted the team MVP, which is pretty strong considering Roethlisberger is there and that also a wide receiver. I'll go to Zach for his name. Is it Brown? Is he the big stud over Antonio? there? Antonio? Yeah. yeah, I mean, so he he's he's major. Now, they say he's not as far as no serious damage. But we're talking, you know, I saw him walking off that field, if you want to call what he was doing is walking. And not only, let's say maybe he plays, but how well in that weather. And, John, you already mentioned it. I, my weather predictions are a little bit more pessimistic than yours. Uh, it's supposed to be down like around 31 degrees at game time, rain and sleet during the day, and 60% of rain when the game starts. I suspect that field will probably be in reasonable shape when they start, but then once that game gets started, who knows what it's going to look like, you know, by halftime. Let's look at Big Ben, some of his numbers, and he's, he's first of all, we've got two great quarterbacks here, both of them Super Bowl winners, Big Ben with two and Flacco with one. Each team does well in the playoffs. We're going to mention some records here. Pittsburgh quarterback Big Ben, 32 touchdowns and just nine interceptions, but those great numbers are predicated on the rushing threat that Bell presents. And now we're talking two guys who together, his replacements, and I can't remember the names, but I'll defer to Zach for that. But I think they together have a total of 56 rushing yards on the whole season. But they're in the NFL, so they must have, you know, some kind of talent. We're going to find out how really great a coach Mike Tomlin is. I've always liked him in the past. But that defense is going to have to step up, and they've had troubles in the past this year. As you know, everything I do is this season. I think they've allowed like 30 touchdown passes. They have just 11 interceptions. But some interesting numbers here. First of all, this year, the Steelers 11-5 and straight up and home, 9-7 and against the bookie, which is good. And they're on a 4-0 and run in that department, which is also good. So they got some momentum coming in. We got a little lucky, I think, Zach, in that game on Sunday with uh, the Steelers. So... Um, let me see. Let me finish this up. Pittsburgh has won and covered the last four, right? In the playoffs, the last six playoff games at home, Steelers have covered every game. They've won five of them. So they step up in this particular role. I've already mentioned the weather. Let's look at Baltimore. Ten and six straight up. They're eight and eight against the bookie. They're on an 0 and three ATS run against the bookie. Four and four straight up and against the numbers you mentioned, John, on the road. Baltimore wins playoff games, however, on the road. Eight and five straight up away, nine and four against the number in road playoff games, and they are five and oh against the number in their last five playoff games. So they don't just lay down here. Flacco, we talked about him. He's got a Super Bowl ring, 27 touchdown passes against only 12 interceptions. And Baltimore rushes the ball for 126 yards a game while the defense gives up just 88. So they, the Steelers got to have this guy play. And even if he shows up, uh, Bell, how effective is he going to be? Uh, a little better pass defense this, uh, the Ravens have allowed just 22 touchdown passes where the Steelers allow uh, 30. And they also have just 11 interceptions. This is really going to be a battle, I think, of the quarterbacks. I think the Ravens have the edge. And rushing, this is a tough game. I think this number is where it, probably where it should be. It might even come down if news about Bell is that he's not going to play at all. i got to believe he's going to give it an effort, but I just don't see much here. I think the line's close. I will give a lean to what I believe is the better quarterback, but not by a lot, at home. I think the line may even come down to two and a half. It might even come to two. I do not see it going up past three. And I would lean to the home team, Zach, uh, lay the points with the Pittsburgh, and I think maybe wait. I don't see three and a half out there. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Did I steal your thunder? No, 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 not at all. <laughs> good good uh, stats there and everything. Um, for me, I've talked about Pittsburgh. John knows this, uh, and John knows this. Um, talked about Pittsburgh since midseason. They've been sporadic, but I like what they're doing in uh we had a segment, uh, I think, uh, six weeks ago where we talked about the. this is the year of the repeat champion. Um, at the time, I was uh, discussing New England, but right now, I think I, I like Pittsburgh. I put a future wager in on them at uh, 25 and a half to 1 to win the Super Bowl. Wow. And uh, near 11 to 1 to, to win the AFC. But uh, I like their balance, even though Le'Veon Bell is out. He's probably going to be out from the reports that I hear. I think they can get it done. Big Ben, he's been in this league a long time. Let's not forget his rookie season. He had Jerome Bettis, 
at 38 years old running the football and was able to get the job done. Uh, he had Willie Parker, who lasted two years in the league. He had uh, Richard Mendenhall, who lasted two and a half years in the league, went to the Arizona Cardinals, uh, left to go be a, a writer in Los Angeles. So <laughs> well, now that's going. <laughs> he's been able to get it done with his arm and whoever's been in that backfield. So uh, I'm sure Tom will come up with something. It's it's kind of sad that they let Legarrette Blunt just walk away because of turmoil and go to New England, but uh, it happened. They'll find a way to get it done, and it's just a short season now. It's just like March Madness, short season, five to six games was for March Madness. Right now, Pittsburgh just focusing on these three to four games, and they've got one at home, and uh, I think this is the one squeaker they're going to need at home where they'll have that home edge, and that's what was crucial about last week's win against Cincinnati. Um, they get to play a team they're familiar with at home in the Baltimore Ravens, and I think they'll be able to uh, uh, clear the hurdle. Baltimore, they've got a solid defense, but offensively, I think they're going to crumble in this matchup. Steve Smith, if you look at his stats, um, it's kind of showing, besides last week against Cleveland, it's kind of showing why Carolina decided to part ways with him. As the season's progressed, his stats have went in a major decline. He had that five, six-week stretch that he was looking like a Pro Bowl receiver. He still has over 1,000 yards receiving, but if you look at his last eight games, he has a lot of games with 30 to 40 yards receiving and not much on the field. Torrey Smith's been banged up all season long, and I'm not sure they have a number one wide receiver right now. Justin Forsett, all – all track gear for him, 1,200 yards. Can they lean on him to uh, carry them to a playoff victory? I don't think so. And Joe Flacco, he's been he's had an awful month of December, absolutely awful. I was surprised they were come back down 10 to three against Cleveland as 16 point favorites, but they got the job done thanks to some uh, critical turnovers by the Browns offense. So let's play the Steelers, small number. And uh, I'll be playing Steelers every week until they lose. So I will be uh, I will be uh, going for the uh, double up the money, triple up the money throughout the playoffs. And you can tell Zach stays with the ladies until they say no. Right? Then he changes names. <laughs> that's another show that we're going to be doing. Yeah, it's tough to go against the Steelers team that is six and zero against the spread. Their last six playoff games, uh, yeah. playoff home games. Mm-hmm. If you like to pay totals, this Baltimore team is on a four and zero run under. The total, and when they're in these wild card games, they're six and one under the total because those are better defensive teams. But the Steelers are the other end, a great passing team. They're on a six and four run over the total, and that's the way that I'm going to look at this game from a matchup point of view because some of the weaknesses of these teams, they both have some shaky secondaries. Pittsburgh pass defense, 27th in the NFL, giving up 253 yards per game. Baltimore pass defense, that's the way to attack them. They're 24th in the league against the pass, and the Steelers, when they play games, in January, 21 and 6 over the total, despite the possible snow coming in. I'm still going to look at these quarterbacks and decent receivers to have uh, good offensive games going over the total in this one. 